Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Kim of Kimberly Budgets and today we have an exciting video. We are going to be going over how to make a budget. I know I have a lot of new subscribers, which hey y'all, thank you so much for joining me. So I just want to walk through how exactly I go about making a budget. One thing I do want to note about this video is that it is not my actual budget. I adjusted some numbers to make it more realistic and make it suit more people in their different scenarios. And the way I set my budget up is a little bit different and I found that it's made it a lot easier for me to do the cash envelope system. So we're gonna walk through that in this video, so stay tuned. So the first step is to make a monthly bills calendar. So here on this spread, I have all of my monthly bills, which are highlighted in pink. Then I have my one annual bill, which is here in gray. And then any kind of holiday where I'm going to be spending money, I have that highlighted in green. And then of course, my favorite days of the month, payday, I have that marked here on the 4th and the 18th. So it's important to do a monthly spread just so you know, and you can visualize what bills are coming out of which paycheck. So what I like to do from here is take, um, let me pick a different color, um, this bright pink color, and I split up my pay period so I can really see what bills are coming out of which paycheck. So here I have all the bills that are coming out of the second paycheck of October. Then again, this first paycheck of November we only have Amazon Prime coming out. And then for this second paycheck, we have the annual bill, both holidays, and three monthly bills. So I also recommend that you go through and just do the first few days of the next month until your paycheck. Uh, so you know which bills uh, in, I guess in this case, December are going to be coming out of this paycheck here. All right, so now we are on my budget worksheet. I first like to start with income so I know what I'm working with. For this example, I have $2,660 as my paycheck. So when a lot of people walk through their budget, they go section by section. I actually don't like doing that because I like putting down things in order of priority. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. In red, I'm going to write down all the things that are not changeable, things that I have to pay for no matter what. And those are my bills, so just basing it off of my bill calendar. So these are the things that I know I have to pay. So I'm gonna go ahead and add those things up So that totals up to $634, and now I know that $634 of my paycheck is already accounted for. The next thing I'm going to do is go into sinking funds. So I know three sinking funds that are really common for folks to have is car, healthcare, and Christmas. And I split sinking funds into high priority and low priority. And so car, healthcare, and Christmas are high priority sinking funds. And the way I figure out what is a high priority sinking fund is if there is a fixed amount of money I have to spend on that thing per year. So I will show you an example. Here's what I did for my car category. So I added up all of the expenses that I have per year, which total up to $1,420 per year to use my car. And then I divided that over 26 paychecks. If you get paid weekly, you'll do 52 and so on and so on. And that gives me $55. Here are two other examples. For healthcare, if you have a $2,500 deductible, that's $96 per check if you have 26 checks. And for Christmas, I wanted to save up $600 in this example, so I 
split it up by 26 paychecks and that's $23 per check. So for those rigid high priority sinking funds, you'll want to do some sort of math like this to figure out what is the perfect amount to put in each category per paycheck. I'm going to go back to my budget. So that's why we're putting $55 in car, we're putting $96 in healthcare, and $23 in Christmas. So those are the first things I put down on my budget, the things that I cannot change. Next in blue, this is where my goals come in. This is the highest priority things that I'm working on right now. So for savings and investments, I'm going to put Roth IRA to max that out, putting $230 in there, and that brings this total to the section to $230. For student loans, or extra debt actually, I would love to put an extra $1,200 towards debt. And so I put these in blue because if I put everything else down, like my cash envelopes and the rest of my sinking funds, if I don't have enough money in the end to make it all work, I'm going to start cutting and saving the blue ones for last because those are my top priority goals. So now we can work on variable expenses. So variable expenses are also your cash envelopes. So for me, I have groceries here. I have spending. I have eating out. I have entertainment. And miscellaneous. And I will also throw in gas to make this a little more realistic. So I mentioned that cash envelopes or variable expenses. These are categories that you have control over, or at least more control over than your bills and your high priority sinking funds. So that means you can change these amounts based on how much you spend, how much you have left over in your budget and things like that. When you're first working on your budget or you're making your budget for the first time, I would suggest going through past um, transaction logs in your bank accounts to categorize your spending amounts. And I did that for every bank account credit card that I had in order to make a more realistic budget. Here I'm putting down $120. For spending, I'm putting $40, eating out 40, entertainment 20, miscellaneous 20, and gas 50. And by basing these numbers off of your actual spending, you're saving yourself a little bit of the frustration of realizing you didn't budget enough or you budgeted too much. Looking at your actual expenses gives you a great starting point to figuring out what these numbers are. And of course, you can adjust them as you go and make future budgets. So let's add all of those up. And that is $290 going into cash envelopes. So let's talk about now low priority sinking funds. For me, that's my personal fund. That's beauty. That is clothing. And that is birthdays. So in order to find out the rest of the amounts I want to put in. What I like to do first is for sinking funds, setting aside an allocated amount and then s dividing it up between the categories based on my priorities for the moment. So I like to set aside $300 and this makes sure I don't get carried away with sinking funds because like I mentioned before, these blue things are goals I am trying to hit. 
So let's take 300, subtract the sinking fund amounts that I know are locked in. So car, healthcare, and Christmas. That leaves me 125 for the rest of my sinking funds. Uh, for birthdays, I don't have birthdays coming up. So I'm putting $10. And that's something you can do uh, based on what you have coming up in your life and shifting around the money based on actual events that are happening. So minus 10, that's 116 left. Uh, it's getting cold, so I want to save up for a winter coat. So I'm putting 60 there, and that leaves me 56. For beauty, I'm just going to put $20. There's nothing I really need to buy. So I'm putting 20, and that leaves me with 36 dollars left for personal. So let's add all of these up and make sure it is at 300. Perfect. And it adds up to 300. So now I have all of the boxes filled out. Let's make sure that the amount I have left over at the end is zero because I am a zero based budgeter which means I want every single dollar that comes in the door to have a job. So we'll do 26, 60 minus 230. That'll leave me with $2,430. Minus the bills category will give me $1,796. Minus variable expenses, that will give me $1,506. Minus 300 for my sinking funds, gives me $1,206 left over. Extra debt, $1,200 goal, and it looks like I have $6 after. So, like I was saying before, I want a zero-based budget. So I want this $6 to go somewhere. And the first place I look are the blue categories. Those are flexible and, I, and they are my top priority. So between Roth IRA and extra debt, I have to figure out which, where the $6 are gonna go. And I am going to put it into extra debt because my Roth IRA, uh, if I continue putting in $230, it's going to max out at the end of the year anyway. And in this example, I'm consistently doing that. So I'm putting 1206 to extra debt, and that leaves me with $0 at the end. So that is pretty much how I budget. So just to recap, I start off with one, things I can't change, so that's bills and high priority sinking funds where there's a fixed amount I have to spend every single year. Then I work in blue and put down my priority goals. So for me, that's extra debt and investing in my Roth IRA. Again, those are things that I would change very last if I had to adjust up or down. And then black, these are variable things, 100% variable if I had to cut to make my budget work, I would start with the black categories. And I know this is a little bit different than a lot of people budget. Like I mentioned before, a lot of people start from the top and go down the list, but I've found that it is easier to make a budget when I jump around and go in the order of priority rather than the order of any template that I'm using. And that is it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!